fucking hate this guy. If you would like to do deck profiles on my channel, then uh, I only do non-mana decks because uh, I don't, can't be bothered with like the same old list with three card vari uh, variations. If you want to uh, send me your profile that you've topped, you have to record it yourself. Uh, we don't do like online deck profiles anymore because that's boring as hell. Uh, check the description down below for my contact details. What's up everybody? Uh, this is Noah. Uh, this is my top 8 deck profile from ARG Boston. Uh, I played Goki FTK. Um, preview of the 3 FTK cards. Um, and so I finished 5-2 after Swiss. Uh, won my top 16 match and then lost in top 8 to the guy who ended up getting second. He's playing 60 card Goki. Uh, so get right into the list. So starting with the main deck, um, I played three Ash. Uh, I thought it was the best against um, the overall meta. Uh, even though it's the worst against pure Goki, it was necessary evil for uh, Trickstar and Trickstar Sky Striker. And it's not the worst if you open two, since you can hit Engage and then you can hit Reincarnation on your turn. Uh, and then I played two Ogre. And two Reaper. Uh, these are primarily for the mirror match since they're the most impactful. Um, and they work even if your opponent has Dolphin, uh, especially Cherries. But I didn't want to max out on these three since they really only work uh, once per duel. It's kind of like you're not you're not really resolving multiple Cherries, and if you are, you're probably in a losing position. So. Uh, and two ogre was really like three ogre because I played uh, Itali. So um, since I played Invoker, the the ogre was essentially an additional combo piece if I used Itali to summon it. So that was it. Seven hand traps, uh, slightly I don't know, slightly more than the than the correct amount of six, but it worked out okay. Saw them when I needed them. Uh, so then I played for Gokies. Three Suprex, this is the least bad one. Uh, kind of clears up all the dead normal summons out of your hand. Two Octo, uh, this is especially important in this deck because if you happen to draw one of the level ones here, um, Rescue Ferret has to summon monsters from your deck whose total level is equal six. So you can summon Suprex, the second Octo Stretch, and then the other level one that you didn't draw. So two is especially important here. Uh, and then one of the rest, one Headbat, one Twist, uh, one Scorpio, and one Bear Hug. This is usually the one you get off a of Soul Day, since you don't actually need it to do the full combo in this deck. So, uh, just the nine Gokis worked out well. Um, and then for the Special Summon cards, uh, oh, I, I guess continuing on, I played two rematch. Um, two rematch, I think, is staple now because of... You really need it for the grind game. People are siding um, anywhere from 11 to 15 hand traps for the Goki Mirror. So it's uh, pretty rare that you're actually able to resolve a uh, full combo, at least in the Goki Mirror match. And then you have, for the special summon cards, you have three Marauding, uh, three Junk, and three Kagamusha Knight. So the Kagamusha Knight, the theory behind this um, was... It's better than something like Elasaurus because it's still a warrior monster, but it has the same role of just turboing Invoker and working with all your level 3 hand traps. Basically, its effect is when you're normal level 3, you can special it out of your hand. Um, so this is kind of cool too in application with Marauding Captain, since you can uh, normal Marauding Captain, use its effect, and then chain the Kagamusha Knight. Um, so that essentially gets you three monsters on board with one normal summon. Uh, which is really impactful since that allows you to play through a lot of hand traps. So essentially those nine special summon warriors, uh, level three, and then the one E-Telly, kind of like another version of those, but uh, with no requirements and doesn't take up your normal summon. Uh, and then the one Phantom Knight's Trap. Um, couldn't really find space to play more of this, but I would have liked to have seen it more. Just uh, It's the, the most live at all times, and you don't have to waste the extra deck space like Instant Fusion. So, if it was level 3, I think I'd definitely find a way to fit more. So that was that. And then, um, Soul Charge, Monster Reborn, and Living Fossil for the, uh, kind of the Reborn cards. Uh, Soul Charge, this card's super broken, but, 
Um, I consider cutting it all the time. It actually lost me my match on stream uh, round five because I opened Soul Charge, uh, Rescue Ferret, Ogre, and Two Call by the Grave. So if this was any level three special summon, um, like Gilosaurus, like I was mentioning earlier, or just any other three level three body, I could have made Invoker and basically guaranteed to win the game since I had Two Call by the Grave, but it wasn't. It's still a powerful enough card that I think it merits playing, but... Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Living Fossil is just like the least trash second equipped to play. And then Reborn's broken because you can summon their hand traps and then full combo. Um, and three call by the grave. This should be staple by now. Um, you're playing a deck where you only need two cards to play. So this is the best, um, the best way to ensure that your play goes through. And you don't have to waste your normal summon like Dolphin. So... Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of, like, Exchange or any of those other trash cards, because, like, they don't, like, allow you to play the game. They just hope that the rest of your cards can get you there, since they they don't do anything, and they're kind of a minus one. So, I don't know. Just not a big fan of those cards. Uh, so, three of those. And then the Phoenix Blade, since it's broken, probably should get banned. Helps you, like, draw four when you're outing a board going second, and that's not very fair. Uh, Ibley. Ibley is um, not not actually necessary to play at all in the deck, but it allows you to end your board, uh, and I'll explain the combo later, of course, but it allows you to end with a goblin in addition to the rest of your board, which means your opponent can't hold impermanence for your top logic bomber or your Cerberus and then make you blow up your whole board in phase, so it's actually super key. Um, drew it a few times, and that sucks, but like... As everyone says, you know, you draw Ibley, your combo is just immediately better. Because they're assuming that the rest of your cards can get you there. So that was that. And then the three last cards were the FTK cards. Um, so these are the, the only three kind of real engine requirements you have to play for the FTK. And, I mean, outside of FTKing, Rescue Ferret's broken. I'm sure someday it'll be a three of in every deck. Since it summons multiple things from the deck with, like, little restrictions. Um, but what you do in this deck is you use it to summon out... Trickstar Nightshade and Samsara Lotus, and then the, the last Super X out of your deck. So what this card does is during the end phase, if you have no spells and traps, it's a free special summon, it's not once per turn. Uh, and then what this card does is if it's sent to the grave for a Trickstar Link material, you can float it back. So this essentially lets you make a Link 2 Trickstar using only one Trickstar monster, since I didn't want to have to burn my normal summon on Candina or something like that. You just wanted to be able to tutor it directly from the deck with Ferret. And then the Lotus, um, that's kind of a cool application. I, uh, I drew this, I mean, obviously you don't want to draw it, but I happen to draw it against the pure Sky Striker matchup. I normal summoned it, and it was the only live card in my hand. The other cards were Hand Traps and Call by the Grave. So I normal summoned it, made Link Karibo, and then End Phase Special summoned it back. And this essentially allowed me to have like two uses of Link Karibo. Um, and I didn't draw anything playable next turn, but it essentially allowed me to like live for a turn or two just on keeping uh, floating this back. So these aren't like the worst cards, and this is any nightmare. Just with a normal summon, it makes any nightmare. So they're not the worst cards to draw, and you can still do your full combo if you draw them. So that was it for the main deck, 40 cards. Um, I didn't run Rhoda or Upstart, since the theory behind this deck and kind of the reason I played it is because um, you could actually still FTK your opponents through Joel and Lockbird. Um... So that was kind of a cool application. If, you, if you're able to resolve at least one Goki search in your search office old or two Goki searches in general, you could FTK them through Droll. So that's pretty cool. Uh, MX Saber Invoker um, is the only non-Link monster. This card's really, really good. Yes, I know on stream I messed up. I realized, uh, realized after that the monster gets destroyed during the end phase. It had just The monster had never lived that long before, so I never knew about that. But apologize. Uh, Link Rebo. This card's really cool because it makes Octo Stretch a normal summon that can get itself off the field to trigger its effect. So I really like that application. It's also really good with Bomber Dragon, uh, which I played for the like the quick play Regeki effect. So really like this card. Uh, and then two Assault. This was the main reason why we cut the uh, the fusion, the Dragoness, and the instant fusions because we thought that playing two Assault was just more valuable. Um, and I don't regret that at all. The second Assault comes up a lot. Uh, especially when going second, you kind of want to have the follow-up play since it's kind of like Spiral, right? Your first Helix never really resolves, so you kind of need the second one. 
Uh, and then Nightmares played Mermaid, Cerberus, Phoenix, Goblin, and Unicorn. Um, don't need two of any of them. Never really came up. Maybe a second Phoenix, but um, I think killing your opponent before they get a turn is more valuable than having a second Phoenix. Next, this stupid unfair card that they should have never given to us. I'm shaking the camera. Um, it turns the regular Goki deck into able to uh, play through almost any hand trap, and it uh, so it makes this deck super easy. It's possible to do the combo without summon sorceress, but uh, it's a lot more gimmicky, and you can't do it through any hand traps. With this card, it allows you to do uh, allows you to push through hand traps a lot better. So that was that, and then lastly for the I guess standard portion of it, uh, Firewall Dragon because this card needs to be banned immediately, so I'm trying to expedite that process. Um, then for the FTK cards, you have to play four. And so these basically take the place of things like the Instant Fusion Target, um, the second one of any of the Nightmares, the Trigate Wizard, uh, things like that that people play, the, the Gumbar Dragon. Uh, so the first is Mrs. Radiant. And this card is actually really cool because if you get cherried, uh, and all the Gokis are Earth, so you can make this card. And it like doesn't suck. It's not like Underclock Taker. Like this card gives your monsters attack. It lets you add things back from grave. So it actually came up when I got Chariot. It was really uh really key to make. Uh, next are the two Trickstar cards. So essentially the theory behind these is that uh, you wanted to be able to access the FTK through your extra deck. You don't have to play a lot of main deck cards. So these two essentially allow you to have one main deck Trickstar monster become this link too. So really like those. And then Balmer, this card was the MVP all day. Um, it helped me out the extra link in my um, top 16 match in game three. Uh, he had extra linked me, but without a try gate because I hand trapped him. Um, so then he ended on all the nightmares except for Cerberus. So I essentially made my way to this card uh, and then was able to trigger it and blow up this whole board even though he had like goblins and uh, yeah, so re really, really clutch card. Super good all day. Really good against Trick Stars too for outing the goats. So that was the extra deck. Um, then the side deck, uh, three dolphin. This card sucks, I hate it. Uh, I'm probably gonna cut it to two. It's really, really bad in multiples. And it's like, I really hope that the rest of my hand can push through because a lot of people are just like realizing this is a card, so they're playing cherries. Uh, they're playing Impermanence, they're playing Ogre and stuff, all which like really hurt this card. Um, so probably cut it to two because it's still like impactful against Ash and Droll, of course, but I don't know. Th those cards don't really hurt the deck anymore, so I think people are going to start to take them out of uh, the main deck and like out entirely versus Goki. Uh, next is three Arch Phoenix Centrics. This is obviously not standard at all. Um, so the theory behind this is like the perfect side deck card. It was the out to things like Vanity's Fiend and like uh, Monster Floodgates. And it was also the out to uh, back row Floodgates like Rivalry goes in and Skill Drain and stuff like that. Um, that our deck just literally has no main deck outs to. But on top of that, if your opponent doesn't draw the Floodgate, then it's also just a level 3 that you can combo with. So I wish I would have played against, I mean, of course I don't wish I would have played against Vanity's Fiend deck. But um, it would have been nice to see if this was actually... Uh, useful in those matchups. I only played against one true Draco and I never drew this, so. Anyway, um, then three Twin Twisters. Uh, this card's just the best back removal we have right now. You have to play it, and you don't really want to waste your battle phase on evenly since it usually just gets negated or doesn't actually do anything. Uh, you kind of want to play on your terms, so that's why you have Twin Twisters to kind of force your opponent into doing stuff when they don't want to. Uh, then three impermanence. This is for the mirror match mainly, but also if I played against Vanity Spin deck, just kind of force it out, uh, force out the Beatrice in that kind of matchup. And then two Droll and Borload. Um, Droll is also for the mirror match, so essentially I go up to 12 hand traps in the deck in the mirror, uh, which means I'm basically guaranteed to see one, hopefully two. And this is also coming in against decks that play engage and terraforming since it's really impactful. Uh, you can just easily side out the cherries for these since it doesn't really change your engine much. Then Borload for going second because I take out the FTK going second since you don't really need it. Um, and you can just OTK them, especially when Boral Sword comes out. Probably going to take out one Dolphin for Boral Sword inside that. So I can take out both the Trickstar cards since literally can't summon either one without Trickstar monsters in your deck. 
So that was it for the deck. Um, we can get into the combo really quick. So uh, for this example of the combo, we'll just say you open with uh, three uh, just random monsters. And we'll say like two marauding captains. So I'll show you like the invoker version of the combo. Uh, I'll just go through it really quickly, basically just focusing on the end board. So normal, special, make invoker, invoker effect, sorry if I'm hitting the camera, um, special out suprex, suprex, and that guy make uh, so it's really cool at that point. You can um, you can also go into Mrs. Radiance. They both happen to be Earth. So if you get cherried there, it's not the worst. Uh, and then you search out the level two Goki and the level six Goki. So the level six off the Assault, of course, and the level two off Suprex. Uh, since you don't actually need the level six to do your combo, then you use the second effect of Assault. Summon Octo, then Headbat. So this all looks pretty standard up until this point. See, so now you're going to go ahead and summon your uh, Mrs. Radiant because the Gokis are Earth. So you trigger both your Goki searches. Um, we can go ahead and get, we'll just get a rematch and then like the level three guy. And then you can rematch back any two, it doesn't matter. I usually like to rematch back to level one just in case something happens that can make a, a Link Rebo out of it at least. Uh, and then you go ahead and link with a Goki plus is sold for Summon Sork. Um, and then Summon Sork, target the Radiant. Let's use Special Ferret because it's a beast and so is Mrs. Radiant. So Synergy. Uh, and then you can go ahead and link these two for uh, Phoenix because you don't need it for the combo. Uh, and then you can go ahead and link these two for the almighty firewall. Uh, you can add back the sword by banishing any two, doesn't matter. And then link one for mermaid. So it looks pretty standard still up to this point. Um, discard the phoenix blade. So special and then mermaid specials Ibli. You can just draw a ghost ogre, it doesn't matter what you draw. Special that. So this is where it deviates again. You're not going to make Goblin here because you want to be able to end your board with a Goblin. So you're going to go link these three, go straight into a Unicorn on the opposite side. Uh, it doesn't matter. Firewall can be here. Unicorn can be there. It doesn't matter. We'll just do it here for the sake of this combo. Um, because you want to be able to have three zones to uh, summon your Ferret. Oh, actually, sorry. Before you make the Unicorn, you Firewall back the Ferret. Uh, when your Firewall is calling to Mermaid. You need to have this back in your hand, of course. Um, and so at this point, you just linked off a Ibli, Twist Cobra, and Mermaid. So you're triggering the effects of Firewall, you're triggering Twist Cobra, and you're triggering Ibli. Um, so you give them the Ibli to kind of play around. I don't know if they're holding Gamma, if they're holding Impermanence or something, and then you get your search off Twist Cobra too. So Twist Cobra is going to get you just a random Goki, doesn't matter. We'll just get the level five. Uh, and then Firewall is gonna resolve to special out the ferret. Uh, so then at this point you use the ferret effect. It shuffles itself into the deck as cost to special summon monsters from your deck whose total level equals six to zones a link monster points to. So you're gonna summon the Nightshade, the Lotus, and the Suprex, one plus one plus four. And you're gonna go ahead and link the Lotus for one to make a Link Karibo. This is just how you trigger the Firewall to special the River Scorpio out of your hand. Uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and link the Link Karibo and River Scorpio for a Goblin in the middle. Uh, you can use River Scorpio's effect to search. Just grab another Goki, Firewall effect, special it. Uh, and then you can uh, we're done with the Firewall now, so you can link Firewall and Suprex to make a Cerberus. You can link one with the Nightshade to make a Bloom, and the Nightshade floats back. Then you can link the Bloom and the Nightshade, Nightshade gets banished, to make a Cat Bat. And then you can link one plus three to make Bomber appear. 
And so now what happens is during the end phase, um, the Samsara Lotus activates. Since we have no spells and traps, special summons itself here. Then Bomber activates uh, to blow up everything in the main monster zone. So the Ibli on their side dies and the Lotus dies. But none of these die because they're all co-linked with Cerberus. And then this burns you for burns the opponent for 200. So then Lotus activates again since it's not once per turn. Special summons Bomber, not once per turn as well. You take 200 uh, since this is also not once per turn. So there's the combo, there's my deck profile. Uh, some quick shout outs. Uh, shout out to Colby, uh, shout out to Johnny, Ace, Avi, uh, and Mitch from Top Caliber. And shout out to Josh, Vincent, Steven, and Andrew. Um, sorry, Josh, never giving you back your summon sorceress. And yeah, that's been it.